blew up the, the World Trade Center, uh, Twin Towers. Uh, or what is the other one? High energy space. Oh, uh, beams. <laughs> uh, high energy beams, either from outer space or from other, some other source. There's very little evidence to support these theories. And I'm not saying that the, that the investigations to those should be shut down. I'm simply suggesting that as architects and engineers, and I think the mainstream 9-11 truth movement should stick to the real solid facts that we have here and, and move forward with it and let go of what we can support. Um, I do give a treat, so uh, thank you for that x-ray data. But that really has nothing to do with my question. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Oh, shucks. I probably couldn't yeah, answer your question. Probably don't like it. No, my question is simply this. Assuming that what you presented here is true, and the uh, terrorist attacks were the 9 11. Ron Paul is one, Dennis Kucinich is another, and uh, it, 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 you, can, you can help them as another way to be active and, and helpful. Shane, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to add that uh, myth is population control. And so if they can lie to us and we'll accept it, accept the myth, then they're controlling us. But if, if we can, whoever this is that, that is doing this, I don't like to point the finger at anyone. But myth is truly a, a device of controlling the population. So if you can if you can get that out of people's minds and get people to look at things clearly, then they'll have a lot less control. questions. I want to make sure that uh, you have an opportunity to to. Well, I, I'd like to uh, sit with you. Come on up here. Uh, Ron, of course, created this incredible model, and I'm all, I only get to see it uh, tonight, and then tomorrow at 2 p.m. we'll be in Houston together as well. And uh, so if you haven't seen enough of Ron's model, and, and everybody, come up and can you touch it? I don't recommend you touch it. It's very fragile. If you can look at it as close as you want. Okay. So um, what, can you ask, answer a question? I'll, I'll see if Ron can answer this one. And go on. Yeah. How do you do? My name is Val, and I was actually a rescuer at Ground Zero. And I wanted to go. Um, I wanted to know we were kicked out of there about two weeks after it happened. And they tried several times to kick us volunteers out of there, out of the area. And is that a normal amount of time for a cleanup of that nature, of that size, or you know, what would you expect? What would you expect? Did you even hear that? Well, what would you expect for a cleanup? How long would a cleanup take of that magnitude? Would it take longer than two weeks? To kick you out two weeks out of where you didn't you say you were ground zero? First responder. Yeah. You were a first responder. Yeah. I've got their like to give up And they kicked you out after two, two weeks. weeks to get us out. <laughs> during the to, while we were there to try to kick us out you know, every so often. Oh, yeah, first waves. Got there. Yeah. They they'd kick you out in waves to reduce the first night we got there, we were told, uh, don't go to the sleeping quarters because we'll kick you out. So we actually had to sleep on this boat somewhere on the floor so that the people would you know, kick us out you know, trying to help. And then every so often they try to get rid of people that uh, I'm proud zero, so we kind of had to you know, fight to stay there and help the people who are you know, endangering their lives. And then two weeks into it, I went out and put it in the story. And there was still a lot of stuff, there were still things, you know, smoking going, everything, you know, body parts still being picked up. I saw you know, it was right next to it. Right I can only say to that, I believe if they wouldn't let FEMA in there, uh, they probably didn't want anybody in there that wasn't really part of somebody they could control completely. We've already heard that the police, uh, I mean the fire departments, really were uh, you know, mashed down pretty flat about what they could say. And uh, I think that was true to the Pentagon too. We have evidence that uh, two of the firemen in the Pentagon uh, 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 volunteered to be on a radio show, Dave Von Cleese. By the way, Dave Von Cleese will be at my club in McQueenie on this Wednesday night if you want to come out and see his movie too. But uh, if they're not going to let these people talk without being fired or kicked out, uh, they look at you the same way. And there's a potential person that's going to see things we don't want them to see. How long would a clip of that magnitude normally take? Is it two weeks? Is it just a little? To me, it was just too little. World Trade Center? Clean up a World Trade Center? Didn't it take six months or something? No, but the, what the rest of you were doing, like, you know, for you know, people and people, uh, et cetera, what we were doing after the, the crash, we were doing basically rescuing people from the debris parts, including body parts, 
was just two weeks. Is that enough, or is it too little? Would you expect it to be longer? I'm, I'm surprised anybody left two days. I mean, I, I, I was so totally devastated. Uh, I, I didn't think they'd find anybody. Didn't they find somebody there on one time, somebody alive? But I think it was almost one. Yeah, no, you're, you're asking, wouldn't it take longer than two weeks to find all of the, 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 the people in the remains? And of course, it would. And, and you guys would kicked out of their wings for them. Now, we're, we're not experts in cleanup, so it's, a, it's not a question that we have we can answer uh, with any credibility, but I, I certainly think two weeks is, is, is a very small amount of time. Uh, I had a comment and then a question. Uh, comment, uh, I agree with the young gentleman about the uh, um, references or um, on calculations and things like that. Like he, he mentioned uh, uh, the free fall gravity one, and that is like a really easy one. And, uh, but in, in like a response, uh, if you include air resistance, all it does is slow down the fall, so it takes longer. So like if you make the model more accurate than that, air resistance to the fall, the building's gonna take longer to fall, so you expect it to take longer than nine and a half, so but it still fell in like ten, so it's on you know it doesn't it, by adding it, it doesn't make it any less weird or less accurate. Does that does that make sense? By adding by making it more accurate, like you said in a vacuum versus thinking kind of atmosphere. The air resistance is going to slow it down, so all you're going to do is calculate that it should have took longer to fall, but it happened. Yeah, so I like the answer to that. Yeah. I think I know where you're going. Well, yeah. that was my point with that. But, but let, let me make an answer. And we've had several questions like this tonight in the same vein. Uh, like, uh, let's have some uh, solid links to uh, uh, scientific data that would support our uh, hypothesis. Uh, let me say this, I have a, I'm a 60 year old architect, I've had a lot of experience in architecture, I've also had a lot of experience in courtrooms, and I have enough right now that if I lived in New York and I had a direct injury instead of an indirect injury, I would sue Larry Silverstein out of his mind. I would have the largest lawsuit in this country filed on Larry Silverstein. And the reason is, is he is a private developer. He is not a uh, member of the United States government, or even the New York government, uh, or New York City government. He is a private individual and private developer. And it's what he's already admitted to on a PBS uh, movie that we saw part of tonight was that Village 7 was a conventional demolition. And that, he didn't say that to pull the fireman out. They tried to correct that afterwards. They tried to correct what he said. And uh, by saying that, well, what he really meant was getting the fireman out there. That's absolutely ridiculous in the context of his own statements. The firemen were not holding the building up. So, uh, you know, that, that whole idea was, was ridiculous. What he really said was that the building was conventionally demolished. Where he lied, though, was that the fire department did it. We all know the fire departments do not bring down high-rise buildings. Uh, that, that was all done, planned, and orchestrated by Larry Silverstein under his protection. And uh, I don't mind saying it. If he'd like to sue me for that slander or saying that, he can go right ahead because I'll just defend myself in court. Oh, but here's what I'm now getting to your question. A lot of people are trying to make this into a scientific debate. And let me tell you, they wanted to go there because we're going to be talking about uh, air resistance and all this kind of stuff for years and years. But in a court of law, all I'm telling you right now is Larry Silverstein would not be able to survive a lawsuit if he is sued on this right now. He won't make it. He will be, he will be uh, convicted. Go ahead and ask your question. Well, that was just a comment. Uh, I mean, but that was like the, the easiest thing, I think, mean, the easiest model reference, like the, uh, the energy. You have about 10 seconds to ask your question. Okay. Um, I'm saying that because I'm being told we have to end in okay. like okay. four minutes. So yeah. I will answer every question. Uh, if you can ask it in about five seconds, and we will answer it in about 10 seconds. It, so think, think how you do that. Go ahead. Ready? Go. Uh, uh, I know like structural steel is like a, has a low yield strength or bangs. You know it's going to fail. Is there any reason for structural steel to have those upper and short uh, sharp cuts? 
like the 45 degree cuts. Like, what would do that? It's not real. 